Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners podcast, we're talking about landing commercial jobs, commercial gigs, commercial work, landing those big properties. How do you do it? How do I do it? And uh, maybe you'll pick up a thing or two. Either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com. And you are here. What's up? Hey, how are you? Thanks for uh, coming and check us out. Uh, if it's your first time, take a look around. We've got a ton of episodes, 100 plus episodes, 67 hours worth of content, something like that. Go back, watch, listen, comment, thumbs up on the videos on YouTube. Go back and watch. It's anywhere podcasts are available and it's on YouTube. If you are, one of the cool kids, I'm talking to you. If you order your supplies through me, you are a cool kid. It's just, there's nothing around that. I had somebody like a year or something ago say, you shouldn't say people are cool kids because some people feel left out. Then buy your supplies through me. If you're buying them anyway, have me buy them. Then you become a cool kid. It's just fact. Listen, I don't like the laws either, but that's what happened. No, I uh, do truly appreciate it if you buy your supplies to me. Uh, 862-312-2026 is my number. And um, the last person to buy something through me, I think, said that I could go buy some brand name floss. So maybe I got stuff in my teeth. I don't know. But uh, thank you. It's one of the funny things to do. Um, texting 862-312-2026 is a cell phone. So texting, people are always like, hey, I threw everything in my cart. Yo, what's up, Jersey? Your show sucks. Your show is awesome. Either way, I have stuff in my cart. Uh, go ahead and put that in. Uh, then they give me the code because I give a uh, discount code in almost every episode. Last week, I didn't. Um, I will have one at the end of this episode, so stay tuned to that. You'll get a 5% off if you order through me. Uh, but then they tell me like some weird, strange thing that I can buy. I don't even know. Like... Started off with brand name stuff. It's been brand name deodorant, soap, a lot of cleaning products, a lot of, a lot of, maybe, maybe I smell or something. I don't know. But either way, thanks for uh, doing that. Either way, thank you guys. Truly, uh, you had uh, made my 2019 amazing uh, for everybody who supports me, and uh, that's cool. Anyway, uh, today we're talking about commercial gigs, commercial jobs. Now. If you have an idea for an episode, tell me. I get ideas all the time. Uh, we'll put them into the kind of like the queue to kind of figure out how to do an episode. But this one was brought up to me and I did an episode sort of on this a while ago and I want to retouch on it because commercial, residential, and route are the real three big window cleaning types of jobs, I guess. And in my opinion, again, comment if I'm wrong, I'm just some dude, right? Uh, but I think that you need to have a diversified portfolio, if you will, of uh, that type of jobs. I love route. I love resi and I love commercial. And I think all three of them have places. They fill up schedules where needed. They give you money when there is slow frequency. It's, it's, it's awesome to have all of them. Now, with that being said, commercial is huge when it comes to dollars. Now, a normal property may only come in at $2,500 to $6,000 property, but you're there all day, maybe two days or whatever. It's a nice, easy commercial property. And I have to say, everyone except for one of the city contracts that we have, I don't do the inside windows. So it's almost always outside, at least for me. Exterior windows on a commercial property, no screens, just f easy commercial. Oh. It's gold. It's gravy. If you haven't had uh, the um, uh, the awesomeness, the, the benefit of, of doing commercial work, try it. It's a little bit scary getting into it because you're like, oh man, this is project's big. What am I going to do? How am I going to bid it? What if I'm wrong? All that fun stuff. But they're awesome to do. It's nice to have a big chunk of change that comes in. Um, the big checks are just as good as the little checks that happen a lot, right? Uh, so it's really nice. The downside to commercial, to keep in mind, is that sometimes they do slow pay some of them. Uh, it seems like the larger the project, the slower they pay. But for the most part, uh, I get paid within a couple weeks usually. 
Um, but it's not something you're going to leave with a check. It just usually doesn't happen. Um, commercial is not as scary as people say either. When you look at it and you get overwhelmed, you go, man, I don't know how I'm going to bid this. I don't know how I'm going to bid this project. Here's a tip with commercial. Any project that you do, a house is small enough sometimes where you can kind of gauge kind of what the pricing would be, but here's what it is commercial. You could bid a stadium if you follow this rule. This is kind of like the way to break it down. It's like the theory that you could eat an entire cow, but you start one bite at a time, right? You break it down into small pieces and you could do it. You couldn't eat it all at one second, you know? Um, and that's a horrible... Uh, horrible phrase but anyway this is what you do you take a building and say that building's got nooks and crannies sides and whatever and you look at the littlest pieces I get legal pads yellow paper you know that yellow pad and I just start writing it down and I start at the front door and go to the right left whatever you want to do and I break it down in little pieces okay that little section there's gonna take me about 10 minutes that one there's gonna take me 30 35 minutes that one over there is going to take me about 20 minutes. That one over there is going to take me an hour. You know, breaking it down into the littlest sections as you walk around. I may have a sheet or a couple sheets of a ton of prices. But here's what happens. Now all of a sudden, I mean, if you look at something and go, ah, that'll take me 10 minutes. You can look at that on any project and know how long something like that will take, right? Because you break it into something you're very, very familiar with. So bidding commercial on the other side is just breaking it into small pieces. Uh, what do I charge for commercial, by the way? Uh, a lot of people ask pricing. Pricing varies, but you can get 3 or $4 a pain exterior only on commercial. And that's like every six month, you know. But again, time-wise makes things a lot easier because I'm not going to be wrong. I mean, you could bid time wrong, but you're usually more right on time than you are counting pains. Counting pains sometimes... You know, it may be a pain, but it's over a generator or it's through trees or it's over a drive through or it's there's a lot of things that can kind of add time. So I like doing time. I like I like time a lot better than per window. Uh, the downside for that, too, though, is if you're newer and it's a little bit harder to figure out the timing. Right. But that comes with uh, experience. You just get a little bit better at that every time. You're still going to mess up bids. I mean, it's inevitable. 15 years of doing this and I still do, right? But timing is a little bit better. The other thing, when you get all said and done, say that bid comes out to about $15,000, we'll say. It's a big project. If this is the first time doing commercial, you're going, $15,000? Oh, my God. That's so much money. I I, I can't. I gotta, I'll gotta. i do it for 12 I'll do it for 12 Stop right there. Hold on. Take a breath. When you have a project and you've broken it down into small pieces, you're not wrong. You're not wrong with how long it's going to take you. You're not wrong and a 10 minutes worth of windows. Maybe you are a little bit, but you, you cannot be a lot off. If you just go around and go, man, I got these 12 buildings, uh, I don't know, like uh, $12,000. Well, if you didn't break it down into time, you're just pulling the number out of your butt. Here's an interesting theory. Uh, there's some uh, investor and money people that talk about this all the time. They say, what amount of money would you need to consider yourself financially stable? Right? A lot of people like million dollars. You're only saying a million dollars because it's an even number. That's it. Maybe you need $1.137 million. Throwing out a million dollars is because it's even. That is the problem when you bid projects just kind of like pulling on your butt. You're always going to go with an even number, right? You're just going to go with a number that doesn't correlate to anything. It's just a guess. And the other thing is, is that if you're bidding by time, when you do submit the bid, you know that that bid is going to be competitive because you know timing. You know that you're fast. You know that you can get it done. Now, if you get down to everything and you're like, okay, I normally charge... 80 bucks an hour, but I know that they're getting three bids and I really want this project. I'm going to do 70 bucks an hour, right? Then you can change the dollar amount. You're not changing the, the finished one to go, oh man, 15 is too much, but 12 is better. What does that equate to per hour? What are you making per hour? How much are you losing by doing that? If you change it to the dollar and you change that, now that number instead of 
$15,173 goes down to, you know, $13,983. Because you change the timing and the dollar, you're going to be a lot more accurate than just changing the number. Okay? That's pricing and commercial. Uh, I have a pretty interesting story. On my first commercial project I ever did, this is a decade ago, I did this job and I, I bid this for this guy who my neighbor knew the property manager. Awesome in, right? And uh, I bid this job and I gave it to him. And uh, I've told the story before here, but the guy goes, I'm like, oh man, I, I didn't, I didn't bid it. He goes, double this price and you have the job. And I said, you mean cut it in half? I don't know if I can do it. He's like, no, 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 double the price. Take this price, charge two times that, and I'll give it to you. You're way too low. Your pricing's way too low. And I'm like, oh, I was bidding it like residential like a uh, route, I was bidding it way off. And I still, I made money on that project for sure. But him helping me out, he got me a lot of other jobs. He's just a really nice property manager. And that's where we get into kind of how to land the stuff and what you're looking for with everything. And one of the big ones is talking to property managers. A property manager is going to be the person who's running the building. There always is a property manager. Even if they work for um, a property maintenance company, they're not even on site. Uh, maybe they actually work for one of the places that are in there. You know, there's a lawyer's office and uh, old Mike Smith, the lawyer, is also the property manager of the building because he knows the people who own it or whatever it is. There's one person who has to take care of the building. Now think about this. In a commercial property, you go, oh yeah, property manager. I mean, they got to make sure the lawn is mowed. They have to make sure that the building is clean that the plumbing is always working. If there's an issue in a bathroom, they're the ones that take care of it, that the water fountains are working, that the building is up to code, that when the inspectors come, they're there, that the batteries are changed and the uh, detectors and the wiring is proper, the rent is collected. They have to make sure that the grass is kept and the lawn, uh, the lawn and the snow, if you're in that area, has to be taken care of. External things like leaking roof and windows and... Every, they have so much to do on the building. So one thing to think about when you're talking to these property managers is taking kind of the burden from them. That's really what you're doing. You say, hey, I do window cleaning and we'll get to kind of upselling everything down the road, but I want to take care of that. It'll get done. You want to do it every three months? It'll get done on our schedule every three months. I guarantee it is one less thing that you ever have to worry about and Here's my cell phone. So if you ever see something that you don't like, you call me directly and we'll get back there and we'll make it perfect. You'll never have to worry. I want to take one of the hats off your head. That right there speaks so much more than we're the best. We clean the best. They don't care. We're the cheapest. It's not their money. They don't care about that. What they care about is what affects them. And what affects them is all of the things that they have to do. The best thing, in my opinion, about a commercial property is once you get that property, it's your property unless you royally mess it up. Because they don't care. It's off their plate. They're not looking for anybody new. They're not price checking. They're not. They're just going to make sure that it's done because they have a thousand other things coming in behind you that now they can worry about. And they're not going to be worrying about the windows. So that's how you sell a property manager. Focus on taking the burden, the extra work, the worry, the hat, the job from them and taking it all over. Listen, one contact, you contact me for anything you need. I'll take care of everything. Like that speaks volumes in property management world. So that is definitely, definitely, definitely a way to sell property managers. But the other thing is that a property manager has a property company, usually. Even if it's an on-site, usually they have some kind of company that's designed or made for this property management thing. And the big thing with that is, is that I have a lot of projects that have buildings that are just property managers. You go in and they're large, large maintenance companies that have, you know, 150 properties under their belt. Well, guess what? You offer a service that every single property manager wants. They need Maybe not at that particular time. Maybe they have somebody they like. Maybe somebody's taking the burden off and they're not checking. But guess what? Letting them know who you are is huge. Because then when they need someone, they're going to think of you. And I've had this, I don't know how many times, where I'll get a call from somebody say, Hey, uh, 
I was in a meeting with uh, Jim, and uh, I was saying about how we're done with our window cleaner, and he told me about your name. Could you just go ahead and do these projects? Uh, here's what the last company charged. You were able to get close. That You handed me a job. Handed me a giant job. The other nice thing with property managers is that one property manager, for the most part, <clears throat> has more than one building. So when you get into a project, you get into a project. You get into every aspect of that project. A lot of different buildings. Usually, depending on the size, it's like three buildings per manager, depending on what they have to do. And it's great because if they get you for one of them, they're going to get you for all of their buildings. Because otherwise, they would have pulled the person off of building number two to clean the windows on building number one. You're the guy or girl. You're it. So working with a property management company, working with a property manager, it's usually a multi-location deal or it's an all-inclusive where they just want you to take all of the services you possibly can. They want you to make their job simpler. So getting into them is a little bit different. Uh, mailers do not work. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. I'm wrong uh, quite a bit. Nobody ever tells me, but tell me. If you think I'm wrong and your mailers have worked, comment down below on YouTube. But mailers in, in, in uh, commercial, direct mailers, I'm talking about just, you know, advertisements, don't work. They just don't. And the reason is, is there's too many gatekeepers. They get so much junk because they have property manager after their title. They just throw it away. They don't care. Unless somebody's looking for the exact service they need and you s send them something at the exact same time, maybe that would work. Maybe. Other than that, it is not worth it. What does work, what does work, is what's called an unsolicited bid. Now, go back to the time when I, I, I was saying before, um, it's exterior windows. Now, exterior windows, I can see what they need done very, very easily. I can see what pressure washing they need done on the building or on the grounds or on the concrete or on the drive up or in the parking lot. I could see everything that I do. I could see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a proposal packet. Remember we talked about proposal packets before being like above and beyond, just amazing, blow you away, all the information. I want my certs, my insurance certificates in there. I want color pictures of the other things, pamphlets if I've made it. I want to blow them away right? I want to stand out from the other guy who wrote it on the back of a napkin. But an unsolicited bid, you fill with everything in there. You make it all nice. You make those custom folders with your business card in the folder. You Listen, it's going to cost you three bucks to get all of your thing printed by the time you print it in a little bit of quantity at least. Say it's 10 bucks. Who cares? These jobs are thousands of dollars. But you put that together. You do the bid and say, this is what your windows are. You put a very front cover letter on and say, hey, my name is Jersey with XYZ Window Cleaning, and I've always noticed your building, and I would love to be the one that helps you with your facility maintenance or your, your uh, exterior cleaning needs or blah, 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 blah. I took the time to count up the windows, look at the project and all the pricings inside. I would love to hear from you. Please reach out whenever you get a free second, and we'll talk a little bit more and see if there's more items or services that you need from us. Super simple. Actually sign it on letterhead, cover letter. They open them. What? Guy sent me everything? Okay, open it up. Now they can look at all the pricing. They look at all your other services. They're blown away by what they see. They're like, man. Well, the guys we have now, man, they, they're they bad. I, don't, I mean, every time they come in here, you know, I don't know when they're coming in. Uh, I swear that one guy's mean to me. every. Now they start thinking about everything. An unsolicited bid is super powerful because it also shows them that you took the time to put this all together, that you took the time to um, uh, count everything up and to make a good impression and all that and send it to them. The other thing is it gets by the gatekeeper, the front desk person, the person who throws that postcard away. Now you're sending a packet. You're sending a packet, you know? A packet will get through every single time because they don't know what's in the packet, especially when they see you know, uh, a packet of, even if they open the mail and they see, you know, nice color folders and them, a lot of times they're not throwing that stuff away. They're going to throw a postcard away because it's a postcard. There's no deemed value. There is in a packet of stuff. So unsolicited bids are huge. That is another way to get through to them. But 
one thing that you need to know is you could put facility manager on there or property manager or whatever, but it's really, really more important to try to find the company that does it or the property manager themselves. And you can do that by going into the location and just saying, hey, uh, I just need to contact the property manager. Do you know who that is? Oh yeah, it's uh, Jim Smith. Oh, do you have Jim's uh, number at all? No, I don't think we can give that. Oh, no worries. Do you have like an email or just so I can shoot him over? Yeah, 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 let me. Because they know it's getting it off their plate. They're giving the property manager. That's what the person is. It's their job to manage the property. It's very easy to get the information. You just have to do a little digging. The other thing is a lot of times, most times, in the very front of a building, they have somewhere on there in like their, you know, get a little bulletin board when you walk in the front doors or a little plaque or a little sign or something somewhere on the property has a thing that will have the name of the property company. You know, a site maintained by or it'll list it on somewhere when they have the rules or regulations for the property or in the parking lot it says all unauthorized vehicles will be towed and then it'll have like you and I property maintenance on the bottom or something. It's somewhere on the building you'll be able to find it with a little bit of digging. Now, with properties like commercial properties, they are a little bit more work than say a residential you can send out a flyer. But now remember, you could potentially be given tens of thousands of dollars over the life of a, a job more than that, right? So they're so worth doing and these are large chunks. So the amount of work you're putting into say a $10,000 building or a $10,000 pair of buildings is a heck of a lot less or a better ROI than you know sending out a postcard that sent you no, took you no time and you getting a $200 house. That's a lot of $200 houses to get to that $10,000 that they just handed you right? And the upsell possibilities are there. That's another thing to talk about is that the upsell of a building, if you get in on window cleaning, you could talk about pressure washing. We have an episode all about getting into janitorial. If you want to do janitorial or you have some staff that's looking for extra hours or something, janitorial is very, very easy if you already have the property management companies under your belt. If you already have them, then it's a very easy, hey, uh, Tom, uh, hey, it's Jersey, yeah, from uh, XYZ. Uh, yeah, no, everything's looking good, but I wanted to let you know that we're getting into janitorial now. We're starting to pick up some accounts, and I thought of you. I thought, man, uh, I would love to start doing that for you, too, uh, on top of the other services we do with the window cleaning and pressure wash. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, can we get your price? Yeah, definitely. We'll get you a price. Let's figure out what you need. You can even tell me what the other company's paying, and we'll see if we can beat it. Putting it out there like that too, a lot of times people will give you the pricing. It helps you get in. Now you're not charging as much per hour janitorial, not even close, than you do in window cleaning. But the frequency is amazing. Daily. Daily. Five days a week. You could have somebody in. I have buildings that were, let's say, uh, two to four hours a building. And they happened five days a week. I had buildings next to each other. I had just the people would just go and at night they would go and clean. And they loved it. It was on their dime. They listened to music and they just did their thing. A lot of people really like that line of work because it's uh, no one's breathing it on their neck. I always tell them like, I'm not here to micromanage you. If you see something you think you need to do, do. Let me know about it afterwards. I trust you. That's why you're there. Just, I don't want to get a call from the property manager saying you missed something. Yeah. Now they have pride in that job. Right, I, I know guys that uh, would do that because it was just after, like they would just play video games or do whatever, and then at like midnight they'd head over there. They'd work, uh, you know, whatever, a few hours, depending on which jobs they picked up, and it was great. They really liked it. Um, it's it's really something that's awesome when you can start sending them different uh, projects. One of the things that we had was I have a location, had a location before I sold my company, and it was a big commercial building, uh, not big, but it was a, what am I trying to say? Our window cleaning company had a location and it was a big uh, building that you could park in. There was offices, two floors, blah, blah, blah. So in there, because we parked our vehicles in there, it was uh, 3,500 square foot of, you know, shop space really. And uh, we had a sweeper, power sweeper. Cause you know, you bring trucks in there, snow and everything gets dirty. Well, we were talking to them one time and we said, Hey, I know your uh, exterior company doesn't do this. Cause I've not seen them do this ever. Or if they are, they're doing terrible. But I'd love to do your curb line. And this was just on one project. And uh, the guy was, because he was complaining about it. 
And uh, he goes, man, I love the curb line to be done and the front entrance way to be done because when people smoke, they throw the butts in and miss and it gets in the cracks and it's a pain in the... It's definitely, definitely, we'll add that on. We'll do it once a month and it'll just be upkept. So once a month, when my cleaning uh, tech would go out there, they'd pick up that gear first. They'd go and hit the parking lot. They'd be there an extra hour or whatever. Boom, like that's opening up the door. You don't have to do it for everybody. You don't have to advertise it for everybody. But remember, with property managers... I want to take their headaches away. I want to be their company. Another big thing is being the 24 hours a day available in case something happens. Now, it's cleaning. There's not a lot that can happen, but sometimes there is. Hey, I just got a call from one of the people down on the first floor that that tile back. Somebody dropped a soda. It is everywhere. Uh, Can you get down there and clean that up? Uh, Absolutely. Now, is it a pain in the butt for me to leave my office to go clean up some soda that's all over? Yes. But you want to know something? It's securing me thousands and thousands of dollars every month. In in janitorial itself, the frequency is there where every month I'm getting checks from these places. And if I do extra services, I bill them extra. And they're happy to pay it because they don't care. It's not their money. They just need to get the stuff done. So having all of the different pieces is very important. Now, if you're doing window cleaning on one of these projects and the guy calls and says, hey, I know you were just out here a month ago. But we have the investors coming in uh, next month on the 15th. Are you able to come out the week before and get those windows done again? Well, guess what? I'm going to move everything I possibly can to get it done. Pain in the butt, yes. But I want to be their go-to. I want them to never think about getting rid of me. So I'll go and do it. And not only that, but you're cleaning like a month's worth of dirt off of windows and getting paid the same amount for six months, right? So it's huge to be there all the time. It takes that burden off of them. It's it's really beneficial and it secures your job of being awesome with them. But how do you find the property managers? Sometimes in your city, now take a look, but B&I is good if you're in some B&I groups. Uh, I was at a B&I group and I never stayed in it because the commitment was just too much for to be guaranteed there once a week and blah, blah, blah. But there's groups like meetups, city meetups. Um, In the city that I live in now, we have things called After Fives, which is uh, once a month or once every couple weeks, the Chamber of Commerce makes these like little parties all over. And they go to a business and they're blah, blah, blah. You can meet up at stuff like this and find property managers. When you find property managers, people who have buildings or people who know of buildings, you just say, hey, what do you do? I'm a window cleaner. Oh, really? Ah, I manage a property. Oh, really? That's awesome. I'd love to talk to you more, you know. Not now, you know. We're just, uh, we don't have to talk shop now, but I'd love to get you an estimate. You get to know that person. They like you. Now, all of a sudden, you're their go-to. There's also property management meetings and meetups. Now, these ones are a little bit harder. There's groups and things, but if they find out you're not a property manager, then it's a little bit tricky because then they know that you're there to solicit them. And there's a lot of people who are there to solicit property managers because they know Property managers have their fingers on the on the uh, a large amount of money, but it's another place to meet them. It's another place to kind of you know catch up with them, to show face, to maybe throw them a business card. If you're in these Facebook groups, maybe it's nice to just throw something out there, and if you're not going to get done, say, "Hey, it's Jersey with XYZ Window Cleaning. Just putting my info out there. If anybody ever needs anything, super low key." Let them make it because they know they need you. You don't need to sell them at that point. You just need to let them know you're available. Very, very uh, beneficial ways to get these large projects. It's work to get these things. But when you do, they're awesome. It's not as much work as I'm making it sound like either. Here's another really cool trick or tip before we go. I'm going to tell you this. And this is kind of uh, coined more by Dave Carroll who was doing this a ton. And then Josh Latimer got into doing a lot of this. Um, but what it is, is sending a tray of cookies with your logo on it. Okay, hear me out. Now, a property management company like the one I was talking about, that there's there's probably 20 property managers in the one office. And they all worked at different buildings, but they, that was their main hub. I would bring them in stuff. Stuff all the time. Like just snacks, right? A tray of cookies, uh, cupcakes. And I would bring them in uh, edible arrangements. And I would always be bringing them some kind of snacks. But what I would do is I would get my logo on the tray of cookies. So we had places that would print up these big stickers. 
you know, uh, I'd have a big sheet roll of these thick, giant stickers on my logo and it would blatantly say window washing. And I would put them on the tray of cookies. And then all the cookies would go on as people are eating them. All of a sudden my logo appears, right? You put them on the top of the tray so when you bring them in, they can see that logo. They don't care. There's no advertising. They get tons of stuff like that all the time. But guess what? If anybody, anybody there at that place is thinking about getting a window cleaner, is swapping their window cleaning out, picked up a new property and wants to try somebody new, guess who they're going to think of? They're going to think of you. And it costs you like 20 bucks to send a tray of cookies. Keeping them happy is, is your number one priority, I'm telling you. If you can make a property manager happy, you will have their work forever. 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 It's very, very cool. It's, commercial projects are fun. It's a fun chase on top of being just a fun job and a nice you know chunk of money that you, you get too. So either way. If you haven't gone out and gotten commercial, Go and do that. I'm telling you, you'd very much dig it. And if you haven't gotten your supplies through me, huh? Look at that shameless plug. Flows like perfect. Anyway, 862-312-2026 is my number. That is a cell phone. So call me or text me um, and be like, yo, Jersey, what up? I uh, got everything in my cart. Put it through. Because the code this week is going to be property manager property manager. That's the code. So if you tell me that in a text or on the phone or in an email or whatever, you're going to get 5% off your order and free shipping. Yeah. But now listen, I got to put this out there because every week somebody seems to do this, but you have to put the order in through me. The only way that I can get credit for any of these sales is if I put the order in. So if you're like, I don't want to bother them. You're not bothering me. This is how I make my money, man. You're actually doing me a huge favor by letting me put an order in, even if it's small, even if it's big. I'm telling you, you can't see me. I'm down on my knees right now asking for your orders. I'm not really, but anyway, you got to put the order in through me. So don't call me later and be like, yo, uh, I put an order in. Can you give me that disc? No, I can't. I can't, man. You have to give it to me and tell me right away so I don't put the order in. And then like the next two minutes later in the text, you're like, yo, uh, property managers. Man, I already put the order in. Anyway, there you go. Selfless plug. Give me a call. 862-312-2026. Save that number. Listen to all my episodes if you could. Give me a thumbs up on the video if you're on YouTube. Give me a review. Do everything. It really, really helps me out. Man, this is, uh, this is how I make my livelihood, so I definitely appreciate it from everybody. But go get some commercial jobs. But more importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.